All right, guys, today we're going to be looking at combining functions. And uh, we're going to be using addition and subtraction to take two functions and combine them. So the first one we're going to be looking at is the addition. And I'm given two functions, g of x equals 2x minus 5 and h of x equals 4x plus 5. This notation over here tells me I want to take my g and I'm going to add it to my h of x. So this is really g of x plus h of x. I'm going to take my function g of x and I'm going to add it to my function h of x by combining the like terms. So g of x is 2x minus 5. And h of x is 4x plus 5. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to collect my like terms and I'm going to combine them. So my like terms are going to be 2x, which is positive 2x, and 4x, which is a positive 4x. Positive 2x, positive 4x, that's going to give me 6x. Then the next thing that I have is a negative 5, and then I have a positive 5. Well, a negative 5 and a positive 5, what's that going to give me? 0, they're going to cancel out, so this will be my final answer, 6x. The next problem is now we're taking a look at g minus h of x. So again, that's the same thing as g of x minus h of x. Now we're going to do a little tricky thing uh, with this minus, uh, and you're going to notice in a second. So we're given g of x, which is 2x minus 5. I have minus. Then I have h of x, which is 4x plus 5. However, remember we talked about before when we ever have a subtraction. That's only going to go to the first term. So what I need to do in this case is I need to put my parentheses here. And I need to distribute this negative like a negative 1. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2x minus 5 minus 4x minus 5. You have to make sure that that negative goes to uh, both of those terms in that expression. So now I'm going to combine like terms, like I did over here. So I have a positive 2x, and then I have a negative 4x. A positive 2x and a negative 4x will give me a negative 2x. Then I have a negative 5, and I have a negative 5. A negative 5 and a negative 5 will give me a negative 10, and that will be my final answer. Let's go ahead and go down to our next problem. Now I'm given h of x equals 3x plus 3, g of x equals negative 4x plus 1. I want to find h plus g of 10. So what you notice now is that we have of 10, there's no longer the x, now we have our input. So we can do this two different ways. I'm going to show you both ways. So I could rewrite this as h of 10 plus g of 10 and go ahead and evaluate 10 inside my functions. So this is going to be, my 10 is my input, so 3 times 10 plus 3 plus, I'm going to put my 10 into my, into my next function, which is going to be negative 4 parentheses 10 plus 1. Now I'm going to take all of this and I'm going to go ahead and simplify it. 3 times 10 is 30, plus 3, plus negative 4, 4 negative 4 times 10 will be negative 40, plus 1. This right here is going to be negative 40. So I'm going to go left to right, 30 plus 3 is 33, minus 40 is going to be negative 7, negative 7 plus 1 equals negative 6. Now another way I could have done this is I could have taken h of j, uh, h of x, added it to g of x, and at the end evaluated that 10. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that, that, how that would, would look like. So h of x plus g of x. So I'm going to take h of x, which is 3x plus 3, and I'm going to add it to g of x, which is negative 4x plus 1. So combining like terms this will give me 3x and a negative 4x, which will give me negative 1x, and then a positive 3 and a positive 1, which will give me a positive 4. Then what I could do at the end is I can put in that 10 inside for my x, 
So it'll be negative 1 parenthesis 10 plus 4. Negative 1 times 10 is negative 10 plus 4 is negative 6. So both correct ways, whatever you're comfortable in doing. You can evaluate the 10 first for each function, simplify at the end, get your answer, or you can combine the two functions together to give you your final function and then evaluate the 10 at the end. Next problem. We are now looking at g of x equals 2x minus 5, h of x equals 4x plus 5, and I want to find g of 3 minus h of 3. So g of 3 is going to be 2 times 3 minus 5. And 2 times 3 minus 5 is going to give me g of 3 equals 6 minus 5, which is 1. I also need h of 3. Well, h of 3 is 4 times 3 plus 5. So h of 3 is going to be, so sorry about that, plus 5, a little typo. Uh, 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 5 is going to give me 17. Then at the end, I'm looking for g of 3 minus h of 3. Well, I know that g of 3 is 1. I know that h of 3 is 17, so I'm going to do minus 17, and it's going to give me negative 16. All right, so two more problems. So in this one, we've got g of a equals negative 3a minus 3. However, now for f of a, you have a squared plus 5. We're looking for g minus f of a. So again, same thing as g of a minus f of a. So we know that g of a is going to give me negative 3a minus 3 minus, and then f of a is going to be a squared plus 5. And why did I put the parentheses here? Because I have a minus that needs to get distributed to both terms. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's going to give me negative a squared minus 5, and then drop down your negative 3a minus 3. Now I'm going to combine like terms, but uh-oh, what ended up happening here is I have a negative a squared. Well, I don't have any other a squareds here that are going to be the same term. I can't combine anything, so that negative a squared has to get dropped by itself. Then the next term that I look for, I'm looking for my a. Well, I don't have any more a's here for me to combine it with, so that's going to get dropped by itself. And that's going to give me a negative 3a. Notice how I'm going from a higher power down to the lower power, and eventually to no variable. Then the last one, I got negative 3 and negative 5. Those are like terms. I can put those together. Well, negative 3 and negative 5 is going to give me negative 8. Nothing else that I can do here. No terms to combine. I am donezo. Last one, I'm going to show you a neat way on how to set this up. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's the same concept as this. Uh, but what it does, it just lines up um, everything in your functions uh, so that if you want to combine like terms, they're easy for you to identify. So again, same concept here. You're looking at g of t plus f of t. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take g of t, and I'm going to write it up on the top. I know I'm adding, so it's going to be plus. And then my second function is going to be negative t squared plus 5. But what you notice here is that you want to line them up on top of each other, the like terms. Well, negative t squared, that doesn't go with t. They're not the same term. This is linear, that one's quadratic. This is one power, that one's two powers. So that's going to be over here, it's going to come before the linear. So that's going to give me a negative t squared to line up with what should have been a t squared over here. Well, I'm going to look at my function, I need plus 5. So there's no t in that function, but I know I have a plus 5. So that lines up right under that one. So 0 plus negative t squared, well, 0 plus anything is whatever that's going to be. So it's going to be giving me negative two, uh, t squared. The 2t drops down because I'm going to add it to 0. I'm going to add it to nothing. So plus 2t. And then the plus 5 plus 5, so uh, 2 positive 5 is going to give me positive 10. And that's it. All right, see you all.